to you and you sit alone in your house and think to yourself, where am I? What am I made of? Who am I? And most importantly, are hands gloves? Well, the only way you're ever going to figure that out is if you... What the hell's going on in here? Now, I don't know what kind of sketch you call this, and frankly, I don't want to know. Why don't we say in this instance, it's S45VN, people have been looking forward to it, you just get on up there to the knife lab and make your film for your internet friends. Sorry, Uncle Randy. Alrighty then. Yes, Uncle Randy. Hello, what a glorious day it is to be in the knife lab. My voice is a little lispy still, but it's getting better. I had oral surgery, if you missed the last video, and um, I've got all stitches underneath my tongue from having a procedure where they loosened my tongue tie. And um, for ending the longer term pain, the short term pain, and then long term gains, we hope. So, S45VN is here. What a day. It's not every day you get a new to market steel in the knife lab and um, this particular uh, example is on a custom knife so the first thing to preface is that this may not be reflective of what your eventual production knife in this steel does this knife has been heat treated to Rockwell 62 by Mr. Alex Dron who made this knife and before I get into steel let's just give a shout out to Alex Dron he makes my favorite bar none fixed blades uh, 180 US dollars I believe was paid for this one Brian, Brian, eh? No, no, Brian. Ow! This is an S45VN steel, and as I'm saying, this price has always vary and go up and down, um, depending on the maker's time and how much his time is worth, if there's more demand, all that sort of stuff, but what I'm getting at is, I love my Falknevens and the Back Rivers and all those sorts of things, but I do not know why I would never choose one of those over one of these, because they are about the same price. So he makes wonderful knives, really thinly ground behind the edge. This one came impeccably sharp, but I did resharpen it just to make sure it's knife lab spec because you know we're all about science here in this highly advanced, highly advanced facility. The little rascal has spirit? Has what, sir? Spirit? Yes, he did, sir. So yeah, um, we are going to do some rope cutting with this steel and get a edge retention result on it. But first, let's talk about the stuff. It's a new steel, S35VN is its little brother. S45VN, obviously, it's got an extra 10 VNs in it. No, that's not true at all. Um, that's a nonsense phrase. Uh, reminds all the steel numbers remind me a bit of the, uh, the spinal tap uh, bit about the uh, amplifier. These go to 11. But yes, there are some differences to this uh, to, uh, between this and S35VN, but not a huge amount. So I'm going to break it down for you first with a bit of steel talk. Now remember, I'm not a metallurgist. Best place to go and look is at someone who is a metallurgist, and that's Laren Thomas over at knifesteelnerds.com. He did a write-up on this stuff. And it is where I got to the chemical makeup. He got a bar of it a long time ago and did tests and things on it. So much more credible bloke than me. I just, I like to give you something to watch. He gives you something to think about, you know. Anyway, carbon content. Carbon is what hardens the iron and makes it into a cutting implement. Carbon 1.4% in CPM S35VN, 1.48% in S45VN. So point. 0.8% increase in carbon. That may not do a whole lot, but then considering the next number, 14% chromium in S35 VN to 16% chromium in S45 VN. Chromium in a knife blade. It binds with available carbon and makes chromium carbides, which are good at edge holding. And then what is left will contribute to stainlessness. So they might be tying up just a little bit more with that 0.08% carbon, or it's going a little bit better in terms of stainlessness. Who knows? Molybdenum is the same. 
2% in both. Molybdenum helps uh, still cope at higher temperatures and high stress. I think it's more of a um, machining, like a, a behind the shop, behind the curtain attribute rather than something that's affecting us end users. Nothing I'd really be able to measure in the knife lab, I don't think, despite my highly uh, delicate machinery that I have here. Um, vanadium is the same too, so both 3% vanadium knives. Vanadium is a, a bit more of a modern um, material being put into steels since like the end of the 90s. Um, vanadium makes for hard vanadium carbides which are great for edge retention. Niobium is in both as well, so both have 0.5% niobium. S30V did not have niobium in it. Uh, niobium it makes very hard crystalline um, niobium carbides I guess and um, they are yeah, good for holding edges as well usually a bit rarer in the uh, in the knives but when they are there they usually count just a little bit what is new in S45VN is that popular flavor of the month everyone's putting in everything nitrogen it's even in our atmosphere um, so nitrogen has 0.15% so not a huge amount of nitrogen but uh, definitely a tangible amount and nitrogen makes nitrides which uh, help with edge formation and edge retention and also it is a boon for stainlessness so I'm not sure if it's enough to really make this a, a you know it's not a nitrogen steel because it's got carbon in it like LC200 to nitrogen steel nitrogen is doing everything this has just got it as an additive so we'll probably just do a little bit of everything just a, just a touch you know just a sprinkle of the good stuff so that's what's new about this steel here what may be newest about it is that they're making something, it's like a gradual quality improvement and lots of these things, lots of these changes might actually be more towards the makers rather than the users. Who knows? Um, maybe this is better to machine. One thing I have noticed is during sharpening, this was a lovely knife to sharpen and this is at 62 Rockwell and this is a, it was an easy sharpen. I used my 300 uh, grit diamond KME stone to do the minor bit of reprofiling needed. It came with a wonderful edge but uh, it was at about 18. I'd made sure I kind of just read it over it to 17, making a nice mirror polished edge. And um, that makes it so it's com this result is more comparable, <laughs> nah, more comparable with other knife lab results. Not not 100% comparable. More comparable. By the way, there are lots of other guys doing this sort of stuff. I really suggest check out Super Steel Steve, check out Outpost 76, check out Big Brown Bear, check out Michael Christie. Lots of guys with all sorts of edge testing. Um, I just present something that's kind of, I hope, is a tangible way of showing, oh yeah, I know rope's abrasive. Cutting rope's hard. It dulls my crappy knives. So I like to show that, you know, the good steels can cut a good amount of rope. That's kind of what I like to do, and you like to compare the amounts of rope that each steel cuts. It's very, very informal. It's kind of the happy place I've landed in this sort of stuff. That being said, there's lots of other fellows who are doing it, taking it a bit more seriously, taking it a bit less seriously. I suggest dipping your feet into all the different pools. Just don't piss in them. And um, without any further ado, because I'm sure you're all chomping at the bit, to get to see what S45VN does against twisted sisal rope. 10 millimeters, same stuff I always cut, using the uh, half chopping board <laughs> that I'm still using until I remember to get wood glue and glue the whole thing together. Really interested to see how it goes. Let's get to it. A 17 degree mirror polished 0.1 micron stopped edge. Starting to unreliably slice the paper. You just pull the paper normally, this is where you only stop. No longer cuts it. 
a nice clean slice, so 580. Huh. Hot in the knife that. So, 580 is a very, very good result. That's a lot higher than I've ever got. It's 5 VN, and it's um, even higher than, so the TRM Atom cut just over 500, I believe, with 20 CV, and that was at 61 Rockwell. So there's a lot going on here, I think. It's a real good, it's a combination. Again, like Alex's um, Nitro V knife, it's a, the apex of all of the things that should be happening and going well. So you've got a very well ground knife with probably a pretty good edge, if I may say so myself, and then a good heat treatment to 62, and then a good steel with good quality you know, components of it that are gonna lead to good edge retention. So very, very solid result. That being said, this is not indicative of what, say, Mr. Reeve is going to do when Tim starts putting it on the Sebenzes, if that starts happening. They'll probably run it a bit lower, and Spyderco are probably going to run it a bit lower as well. So who knows? Uh, and they're all going to come at edges at 20,000th or whatever. So you might need to seek it out if you want this sort of race car version of the S45 VN steel, but perhaps look at this as an upper limit of it for... Um, edge retention versus rope. It's probably the healthiest way to look at it. I have no doubt though that when it comes out in mass production, it's still gonna be a, a good steel. Just like S35 VN is still a good steel. Like it's absolutely great. Like if you've got a knife made in it, you're doing fine. You don't need a cold child line just yet. So um, yeah, overall, mainly I think it's the knife and the heat treatment and the maker doing a lot of the pulling here as well. But S45 VN seems like a very promising, if not completely, you know, rudimentary upgrade of a steel. So there we are. I'd love to see what I could do with just S35 VN. I wonder if we could get it to this stratospheric level of um, performance as well. That'd be pretty cool to see as well. But who knows? Uh, I don't actually have an S35 VN knife here at the moment. Um, the last one I had was my AD10, and I gave that to um, Martin over at DBK. So I don't really have a test to compare it to, but then I've never had an SC 5 year knife at 62 either, so as I always say, there's a lot of variables here, a lot going on, hope you've enjoyed this example of seeing what S45 can do. See you in the next video guys, goodbye.